I was born in Iran in a very devoted Muslim family. As a matter of fact, my father went to Islamic theological school. He went to same school that Ayatollah Khomeini went to. And when he finished the school, he was an imam. And he taught me as much as he could about doctrine of living in Islamic way. In the young age, I was memorized most of Quran. I was preaching to friends, neighbors, relatives. I loved God so much. And I wanted to do my best to please him. In my Islamic faith at that young age, I fasted, prayed five times a day. I just wanted to do my best for Allah and Muhammad. I'm doing my best to please Allah. But I'm wondering why I'm failing so much. It was as if the more I tried to please him, the more I failed. And I got to a point, I throw my hands in the air and I said, forget this. I didn't know why I'm sinning. I wanted to do my best for God. But not only my best was not enough, but I was doing very, very wrong thing. I said, there is something wrong with me. I want to do my best, but I'm doing my worst sometimes. And because of that, I felt depressed. I said, there must be something more than that. I felt I was in the bottom of the pit and the pit was filled with sludge, not even water. And I'm drowning in the goosey, filthy, dirty water. I need somebody to rescue me. I said, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to live like this anymore. There must be something better. There must be hope. Why I can't do my best for God? Why I'm sinning? Why I live in darkness? I don't desire to do like that. But why I can't do my best? One day, one gentleman I was working with, he was a Christian, referred me to verses of uh, scripture, John 14, 6. And uh, the, this verse says, I'm the way, I'm the life and the truth. No one comes to the Father except through me. In spite of being in the bottom of the pit, I still said, what a cocky person. He is saying he is the way. He is the truth. I said, this is blasphemy. He is a cocky person. And I was thinking about this in my mind and heart because I had no peace. I had no joy. In my heart, I wanted to please God and because I could not please God I was depressed my mind always came to this verse and I said how can it be how can I be 
just one way to God. And then it was as if the Holy Spirit pierced through my heart. I said, listen, if there be more than one way, then God would confuse people. I was struggling, but I was thinking about it. So I had Quran in my hand and the Bible in other hand. And many, many nights I slept with these two books, reading Quran, reading Bible, reading Quran, reading Bible. The more I came back to Bible, the more fascinating it was to me. I found many, many verses in the Bible that talked to my heart. And I began to see this book is about having relation with God. I never saw anything like this. I never saw that in Quran. I memorized verses after verses in Quran, but it never told me love your enemies. Never told me compassion, friendship, intimacy. The, the type that Bible tells you. I had a dream. One night, in my dream, I had two books on my bed to the, my right and left. In my dream, I heard this voice. You want to know which book, which book you call me father, which book you call me Abba. That is the book. I knew immediately which book was right. In Quran, you never call God Father. And I said, Lord Jesus, help me take over. Be everything to me. In that moment, it was as if somebody threw a rescue jacket and I was able to swim out of that sludge pit, darkness goose, and I had new life. I was a new person. I had joy and peace. I tasted Jesus. I had eternal life. I have a joy and peace that is not from this world. It's unbelievable the differences. The difference between what I was and what I am. With Jesus, I'm a better worker. With the Jesus, I'm a better father. With Jesus, I'm better husband. In every category of my life, I'm much stronger because of Jesus. I love Muslim people. They are wonderful people. They need Christ Jesus. Jesus built the bridge between us and God. He has done it for us. Nobody else, nobody else, not Muhammad, not Buddha, nobody else can do that. Jesus Christ was the sacrificial lamb. We do all these things, but we don't understand. Jesus died for our sin. 
Nobody else can die for our sin. Nobody else will. But Jesus done it for you and me. We just need to open our hearts and take him. He would change you, my brother and sister. No matter what country you're from. No matter you are Shia or Muslim, Sunni or whatever you are. He can do the same thing for you. God is real. God is alive. God wants you. God wants to break those chains. Wants you to be free. Jesus is real. Jesus is not a face. When I say Jesus is real, not thinks about Jesus is real. He is real himself. He is life. He is light. He is God. He is. He was before Abraham. Take him, my brother and sister. Free yourself. Free yourself from bondage of sin and darkness. It's enough. It's enough. Time is short. Time is short. Do not allow Satan keep you hostage. Do not allow remain in darkness as a slaver, as a slave. Free yourself. The only way you can free yourself is take Jesus. Take Jesus. He is everything. Without him we are nothing. 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 He loves you. He cares for you. He gave his life for you. That you live. Have eternal life not perish he's God take him my brother and sister take him take him that's the most important decision that you make in your life take him do not reject him have life abundant life never ever he let you go you be his forever I grew up in a Muslim family. My father studied in a big uh, Islamic university in, in, in Cairo. And uh, he taught us how to read Quran, uh, how to, uh, to pray five times. We have to do this surahs of Quran after each prayer because if you need more blessing. And we did, and we did more and more. I start to preach Islam to my friends because I feel, because my father, uh, a professor in Quran, and so I start to preach, I said, oh, why you, we have to do this and we have to do this? I start to keep, to lead the people to Islam. Yeah, and because that's the way I am. I, I, I like the people to be Muslims like me. I left my country and I went uh, to Europe, to Holland. In, in Holland, uh, when I came to Holland, I still very good Muslim, very good Muslim. I praying, sp spending a lot of times in, in, uh, uh, in prayer, fasting, everything, reading Quran. But now start a new life. One day I met a lady, she invited me to a church. She said, come to see. I am so welcome in that church. Uh, she said, okay, can you help us to translate this text to there's some Arab in that church? I start translate the scripture. They start using me in that church every week. 
And Jesus start work in my life because I start reading a Bible. I said, huh, what's that? And the, in the same time, another people that way, my neighbor, they are Christian. They start, they are friends. They start talking with, with me about Jesus. And Jesus doing this, doing miracle. And, uh, uh, and I never hear about Jesus, never. I have no idea about Jesus. I start loving these stories. Love, I, I love the stories. And, uh, and uh, other way, I start working in that church. And I have relatives there in Holland. And uh, my auntie, she said, why you are working in, with a Christian? Why you go to church? I told her, because I translate, she said, be careful, be careful from a Christian. I said, don't worry, don't worry about me. I am good Muslim. And more than one year, I every week, every week in the church. So I, I have a lot. And the people, they, they saw me. I am so sincere, so love God. So they, and they know I am Muslim, but they didn't tell me anything. This is the beautiful things from Dutch people. They didn't. They show me Jesus from their love, from their caring. And I started to cry, what's this love? I feel I'm so bad. What's this angels? And because they, these things touch my heart a lot. And the, the love for my, the church, the pastor, the people, I give them nothing, but I, I receive all love, all caring. For what? I'm just a bad person. I did nothing. These things, I didn't have it in Islam. But these people, they didn't know me. They even not my life. But just, I'm welcome. I am working in the church and I'm Muslim. They give me opportunity just to work among them. Uh, later on, uh, one man uh, start from my country, but I didn't meet him. He, he's, he wants to start the first Arabic conference in Holland. Uh, he start looking for Arab people. He asked my pastor, just he asked all the church, do you, you have some Arab people in your church? He said, yes, I have women. Then he contacted me, said, I invite you to this conference. I don't, I don't, I don't like to go to this conference, afraid. I don't like, just my church say, please go to, the, to this conference. In this conference, I hear the, pre the preacher talking about salvation. Jesus died for you. Jesus give you his life. Jesus give you his blood. You are, you doesn't matter. You are from which, which background, Muslim, and just as he loves you and he has a plan for you, just special for you. You are here in this country because he bring brought you here because you are so and I, I don't know just I hear this bus I don't know what's going but something I just stand up in the middle of conference crying crying from and just water and the, the pastor said do you like to accept Jesus is your in your life as a, a savior I say yes but I didn't know what that means just I said yes and with my tears I said yes but I didn't I didn't know what's that later on I came back uh, I I came back I went to this conference empty I out from this conference Jesus in my heart in my life I feel joy but it is very slow because I still doing my Islamic ritual. I still go to this uh, uh, translating in this church. I still contact with this, but it is not clear. I, I love Jesus. I start love Jesus, but also I love Islam. I want to keep them together. I, I keep them together. I, I go to church praying everything together and I'm enjoy it like this way later on the friends they said you are so good you love even you are growing in Bible but you have to choose you are so child you are on but you have to choose or Islam 
you cannot you cannot mix at, at that moment i i thought this is the way i i love god i said oh god uh, now i know you from all the ways i know you from islam i know you from religion i thought this is the way i am something special but i didn't know the way for him it is one way i didn't know they told me yes the way for him just one way and now i start suffering because if i choose christ i have to leave my family all things and i don't want i didn't want I still some roots in islam in my side it is not easy don't it is not easy to leave islam the brother who invited me to this camp to conference he start taught us the basic how to read bible uh, d- discipleship give us a, a basic discipleship courses i always i go always i go when i hear bible say there i go there i go there i go i asking a lot a lot i want to know more what happened in this year something break the islam totally in my heart uh, my fr- my neighbor the, uh, this people i pray with them every day uh, their father he said my daughter you are, you know you are my daughter and i love you so much but i want to tell you the truth we are, we have a book book said the truth about islam please read it muhammad it is not a true uh, prophet when i hear this even i i start loving just but the roots are still in is i don't like to hear any bad things about muhammad or islam still still it is because this is my family this is my history and i grow and i have i love all things from my background he said and i just shook and he said read this book i start just when i read the first paper just i throw a book i said no i don't like to read any this book this book so bad the writer so bad why he talk bad about my prophet no but later on the book just bit among my books always something i see the book he said come to read me and something the book called me to read to read him to read it one day i read this book i just shaking I I read everything something never never ever know about Muhammad about Quran, the truth and the truth from and why I didn't know why my father didn't know why if my father know why he didn't tell me why nobody but later on I say because with the Islamic lens always they put us close all the windows to see the light they put us in darkness and here when i am in holland it is their freedom and i start praying praying day and night i crying and always jesus he said yes come to me my child this is your way i said but i have to take my said no or them or me and I did. I didn't know the following of Jesus so difficult. I I didn't know I have to sacrifice everything but I did. I did. And and at this now I I have a joy. It is I suffered a lot but at least I have a future. I have a future with him. I said God who are you? Please hear Quran and hear a Bible. Please, I get tired. I need the truth from you. I shout every day, screaming early morning. Who are you? I want something from heaven. And he start work with me. He start work with me. And he start work with me. I I start hate the the Quran. I cannot touch with him. And I didn't know what. and he give me a desire to love bible and oh i saw the light i saw everything and i something oh, wonderful happened just 
One day I praying, I saw the light, big light, and and show me that he gave me, this is the Bible, this is your way, this is church. And I I said, no, but it is, it is, it is, it is. And he gave me a knowledge in his book, I cannot believe myself. I can't answer every question. Every, if some people in the beginning, they start asking me, I start teaching them. I start teaching them, I can I believe. From where? I don't know. I can't answer any question. Any qu- from where? From him. From him. And I'm growing. I growing. Now I am a leader. I am a leader. I lead the people to the Christ. I help the people. I counseling the people. I am leader in in my church. I am working in in His kingdom. In His kingdom. And. I see, I see his glory, day by day by day. Hear my testimony, please. If you are Muslim, if you are Bodhi, just try my life and then you choose because Jesus, his life, he doesn't say you have to come. No, you have all choices, but just try him and then you choose your way his way or another way but his way he give you the salvation other way doesn't give you any salvation there is no future in the earth or later i love you my family i love you my friends but please try it you lose nothing you lose nothing just to try it i pray that jesus touch their heart open their heart they can they can hear uh, open their ears they can hear your uh, your voice open their eyes they can see your glory and they can see the truth they are innocent they are wonderful people and they can because now they didn't know anything just they they proud themselves but they are just blind they living in darkness. I was with them, so I know very well their thinking. I know very well they, their life because I was part of them. I was so stubborn. I said, no, no, no. But he broke this, give me another heart so I can see him. I, I, I feel him I, and I show him, I show his light, I show his work in, in my life. I want him just to work with him with them because I love them I want them to see the glory where I am with and the salvation and the future a happiness a joy and how I I am changed totally I I changed totally okay I give you the advice go to your room pray your Islamic prayer tell him I want to go to God I want to go to it to you if my prayer, it is the way for you, please pray this prayer from bottom of your heart because this is I did. I told him, I don't care. Just show me the truth. If the truth in my religion or I just your want your face. Ask him. And if you are honest, he show you. He show you. He show you. I was born and raised a Shia Muslim. I grew up in a religiously saturated environment. So I practiced um, all the requirements uh, of the Islamic law. I prayed uh, uh, my prayers, uh, I fasted. Uh, it uh, It was at times difficult, at times very easy because I would do it in the community. At school, we would go. Uh, at noon, we would. We were required to go to and do the prayer, and um, so it was a good experience uh, growing up. Um, I, I loved God, and I wanted um, to do all that I could 
to please God. I would memorize the Quran and I loved reading it and I loved memorizing it. It was a good experience. I still know much of it by heart. Allah was God, of course. Uh, he was a distant God. I knew that I had to please him. And I knew that I was failing most of the times. Um, at some stages, for example, if I was missing a, uh, a prayer, I knew that I had to make up for it or I would be punished. If I was missing a fasting day in Ramadan, uh, I knew that I would have to uh, make up, you know, 30 days for each day or I would be punished. Uh, one of the most difficult uh, things uh, as a woman was if it was the teaching that if my hair was not all covered, I would be hanged, you know, in hell by my hair, you know. Um, so that was uh, my experience growing up. I had a vision when I was six years old of the Virgin Mary. At the time I was um, in a mountain place, it was dark, I fell and I couldn't get up. I wasn't hurt or anything, I, just, I was just heavy, I just couldn't lift myself up. And there was a rock, a huge rock, and this lady came from behind the rock. She held my hand, picked me up, and she said that she was Mary. And something happened to me, um, some kind of warmth. Some, something and that stayed with me I asked my mother who Mary was and um, she said that she was the mother of Prophet Jesus as Muslim would know her and revere her and I just loved her that touch was like a seed that was planted in my heart it was a seed of love and I just knew that I wanted to be where she was when I was nine, I learned about uh, St. Bernadette. It was an old black and white movie, a 1924 movie, uh, The Song of Bernadette. I saw such purity of, of love in, and such compassion. And when uh, Bernadette was healed by Mary, I saw such a transformation in her life, such a devotion that she left everything behind to just serve God. And not because she had to, but because she loved God. And that was uh, something that I had never seen or experienced as a Muslim. When I saw that, that changed my whole life. At, at that time, uh, the only reason that that I was thinking about Christianity and not Islam, not devotion to um, God in Islam was because I loved Mary and I wanted to be where she was. And I knew that the church was where she was. I was desiring to go to church with all my heart. It, the love was just there and I wanted to see what it's like to go to a church. I had always seen churches, but I had never dared enter a church. And um, we had a friend who, uh, when I shared with, uh, with him that I was interested in learning more about Christianity, he said, well, why don't you come to my church? And, uh, and I went there. And my experience was the experience of arriving home. It was immediately home. It was a peace, a joy that made it be just home where you belong. When I, when I started going to church, the whole community became my family. Um, I was the only Middle Eastern person in the church. Uh, but they loved me. They did anything that they could for me and they became my true family. And uh, they were by my side through thick and thin, all the difficulties, they supported me, they prayed for me. Uh, when I needed prayer, the whole church prayed for me. And some of them, they stayed with me and prayed with me throughout the time that I needed constantly. Um, so that was a sense of community that I had never experienced. Uh, in Islam, the sense of oneness that we are, we all belong together. And then I learned about the 
teachings of Jesus and who Jesus was. At the beginning, I didn't grasp what it really meant. And I remember the first time that I started reading the Bible, especially the book of Genesis, I thought, oh my gosh, what the heck is this? It, this is stupid. I truly thought, you know, this you you got to be kidding me. Um, and also the concept of son of God. I thought, you know, God doesn't have a son. It's only one God. There is only one God. How can these people say that, you know, that we worship one God when they say they talk about three gods? And eventually, I, when I attended the church, I learned about uh, what it means to be the Son of God. Not in a physical sense, in a sense that we understand in, a, in our human relationship, but what it means to be the Son of God in God's relationship within God's persons. It was never a matter of um, dogma when I knew I would be a Christian. It was purely love. And what happens is that Christianity is not a faith, a religion that would make sense because it's based on love. If I were to compare points like that, I don't think that I could ever succeed. Uh, it is the work of God. It is uh, the love that God placed in my heart. Um, Islam is a religion that is work-based, so it's logical. It makes sense for me to do something right and to be rewarded for that or wrong and be punished for that. That is how math works. That is how logic works. Uh, to say that, okay, there was a God and he had a son and the son came and he died for the whole world, uh, it sounds more like Greek mythology. It does not make sense. And unless God works in your heart, you cannot accept that. And that's what happened to me. It was purely love. I was so in love with Jesus. He was the person who expressed the depth of love of God for us, for our humanity in this world. It was just purely a spiritual thing, a work of God. My passion and my prayer and my desire is for my Muslim brothers and sisters to come to know Jesus, not because I think that I am right or Christians are right and they are wrong, but because I see how transformative it is. And I see this abundant love and I experienced the difference between the time when I was a Muslim, I, how difficult it was. At the time, I didn't realize it was difficult. But now that I look back and I live in such freedom, I can see that, that I was truly in chain. The difference between Islam and Christianity as I experienced that, it was like this father, this God that I had known all my life, that I had loved all my life, but I could never really connect with him. I could never embrace him or I could never experience his embrace. When I became a Christian, I, I experienced the embrace of God. I experienced that my father is here that he is not going to leave me. I was no more, no longer an orphan. Something within me changed. It was not that my actions changed. They changed because of that transformation. But the transformation took place first. As uh, Jesus says, I became like a new creation, like a child that is not orphan anymore, that does not have to be ashamed anymore. Uh, that does not have to work so hard anymore. So it was a completely different uh, way of being, not doing. It was being a new creation. So it is, I think it's very important to be open, to just accept the possibility that there might be something to what Christians said. 
It is not to understand it. Um, they don't need to understand it immediately. Or um, it's just being open. What if Jesus is truly the Son of God? What if we can really have a life that is filled with joy and love and peace instead of having to live a hard life of obedience knowing that you are failing all the time? I mean, these are huge ways of lives, uh, uh, huge different ways of of living. So I encourage my brothers and sisters to be open and to at least read the Bible and and be open to the work of God. My name is Dauda and I was a Muslim. My father's name is Ali. My mother's name is Ali Zeta. And they raised me as a child and um, as a Muslim family, seven days after you were born, uh, you have to go through the tradition of uh, what they call in baptizing. And I went through, and they gave me the name Dauda. And uh, like around uh, four or four years old, you know, I used to follow my father to the mosque and to pray. I went to the mosque and I prayed like other people. and. Sometimes it's a time like Ramadan, we went together and pray and fasting and just like five days. We have a mask in our family and that's a kind of family devotion. After the prayer, sometimes we, they kept the children there just to teach them the word. My father uh, let me go with my older brother, the first son of my father, who just came back from uh, military service and but my, my, my brother was uh, somebody who went to Quranic school and uh, my brother just took me with him and he taught me how to be Muslim and how to pray like a Muslim as a leader of the family he had to teach me but um, something happened I found that you know I had a couple of friends that come over me stay with me and they was talking that is another God and they pray and they go into the church and I said what's that they said, you know, they're going, they're praying, they're singing. They just sing and sing. And they, and they said, oh, we want to, to receive Jesus Christ as personal Savior. I didn't go because for me, I was afraid. And I, so I left. When I left, something happened in my heart. I keep heard that singing in my heart. Every time that I'm sleeping, I look like a, a singing. Some such song coming. I can't remember the song. But I keep I heard the song, and sometimes the church wasn't so too far from my house. I heard the beating of the, the beating, the singing. I came too sad, and something pushed me. Go and tell your friend to lead you to the, to the pastor. And I went, I tell my friend, I want to see your pastor. I said, for what? I said, I want to be a Christian. And he said, you want to be a Christian? I said, well, I went there, and uh, he told me, you want to repeat this, this thing after me? I repeat it look like a peace came in me, over me. And I feel that peace, and I say, that don't no, no look like a, over, like a, something is connected to me. And uh, I look like I want to share that thing with somebody. Because just that peace and that love, that, that something that pushing me to say, oh, I became a Christian. And that was that, and I left. Uh, that was a, in the summer vacation, I went and I said to my mother, what happens if somebody of the family became a Christian? They say, don't even think you are dead. You are dead. If your father knew that you became a Christian, you are dead. I said, okay, I'm gonna tell you what my mother, I became a Christian. He said, what? You are dead. You don't even think about that. I said, what about your thinking? He said, for me, I don't have a problem. And I said, okay. Anyway, I became a Christian. But I didn't let my father know about those things. I still going there, going to the church, doing my own things, and hiding to my, my, my brother. I finished high school. Now, I went, I tell my family, I became a Christian. 
oh that was that was that was really something bad and uh, my father didn't handle that easily he said okay you became a christian we're gonna see we're gonna help you to be to continue your study but i was like i have a scholarship i can just do my best and um, later on they want to see if i'm going to continue to fellowship uh, in the christian way and they gather now the family to make sure i'm a christian because uh, but maybe i'm playing i'm joking and my family they gather the family and they create a call a meeting and they say they call me and say are you became a christian my father asked i said yes he said are you became a christian second time i said yes are you became a christian i say yes i say that is shame you are a shame for me since then my family my father my brother nobody became a christian and you are the one that would put shame in my life you like a bad seed i can't i can't like i can't really let you do that and when you are the best seed, I have to take you from it because you are the one that will bring everything in my house. I won't let you that. And according to the law of the Sharia, if I might kill you, I have go I have, that's my right to do that because the law accepts that. The Quran law accepts that. And my father said, You have to decide. You see, whatever you need, tell me. If they tell they're gonna give you something, tell me I'm gonna give you whatever you need. I don't know why you give me that courage to refuse. I can't understand why, even now speaking, I can't really know why. But I take that decision and I walk up to the family. My father said, that's it. I don't want anybody to get close to you. I don't want anybody to help you. The one that will help you is a curse for the family. You are cursed and if I'm dead, don't come over because you're going to die. And they send me back on the street. I finished the high school, but I have a scholarship. I have to now to go to university. But the government do want to give me. I went to the street now to live like that. Now I went down the pit now because I start smoking, doing all the things in the street. One day somebody tell me, "You are too intelligent. You are about to go to university. Don't now." that you, you're not supposed to live on the street like that. Go and make a test and go to be a teacher. You can have that teacher in Africa. I said, okay, I made a test and I passed the test. I went to be a teacher in the school of teacher for training for two years. And uh, after the two years, I met all the Christian dead and over there I continued to fellowship. Speaking to my brother and my sister, come who is a Muslim now, just to let them understand one thing. It's not in our own works that we can go to heaven. Heaven is a free gift. And we know, and I know like I know, and know that Christ died for my sin. It's nothing about five time prayer, but things or reading the Quran or doing things that really will bring it to heaven. It is that kind of relationship that you will have through uh, Jesus Christ by accepting him in your, uh, as your personal savior. Because uh, if you accept him as your personal savior, the same spirit that raised him from the dead will dwell in you and when you will die, you will be raised and you will join him in heaven. And I know that that conviction that even tonight I'm dying, I'm going to heaven. That's my assurance. And I know that I want them to be, to, to, to go to heaven too. I want to ask them to go to heaven too. Because I know that God sent Jesus not only for me, but for them too. Those who are Muslim background, those who are Muslim humankind, and I believe that and I trust, I know that God sent Jesus Christ to die for them too. Don't fear your family. Don't fear anybody. Just take a step and just say, I'm going to receive him as my personal savior. And that step, you are confessing him as the son of God who died for your sin on the cross. Accepting him in your heart. And you will say, you will say that 
and I believe that when I just confess him with my mouth and I believe him in my heart that he died for my sin, immediately I know that I'm saved. That assurance in my My message to my Muslim brother or my Muslim sister who is Muslim, just take that step today. Jesus Christ is above everything. He can protect you. He can just provide for you wherever and whenever situation you are in. Just take a step and trust him. And try him. You will see what he can do, what it will take you from this step to another one. I just want to say that before my parents, before the family, and because there's a crowd and I stood up, what makes me stood up, I, there's a kind of force, that conviction. They say, if you're going to kill me right there, you can kill me. But anyway, I know that from there, I can go to eternity because that was really that conviction, conviction for me, that make me choose a Christ. That conviction in me, that is living in, in this life, like uh, they explained me. I went before uh, uh, at my conversion, they explained me why he, he died for us. And if you accept him, I say, okay, just like what he said, you know, I know that even they kill me here, I'm going to, to join him and to stay with him. And that conviction that makes me choose Christ be. Uh, instead of my family. Even I know that I love my family. But I like Christ more than my family. I felt somebody, you know, uh, hit my uh, knees. Nobody was hitting me. I felt on the floor. I felt like a lightning hitting me. I fell on the floor. I couldn't move. But I was feeling the peace in me. I was hearing how they pray to the girl. When I get up, I was so weak. I couldn't, I couldn't even um, walk. I felt so much power over me. Hello, I'm Pastor Reza Safan. Welcome to A Muslim Journey to Hope. In this series, we hear the true stories of Muslims who have put their trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are truly hungry for God, you will find Him as I did. Today we will hear from a Turkish woman named Khadija. She was named after the first wife of the Prophet of Islam. Khadija went on a remarkable spiritual journey that we call the Journey to Hope. I'm from Turkey and uh, I raised in a Muslim family and when I was 11 years old I went to a mosque in the town to have Quran lessons and pray five times in a day and Allah is going to weigh your good deeds if you did more good deeds if it weighs more than your sin you will go to heaven, but you have no assurance. You don't even know. You have to keep doing good things, helping poor, clothing poor, doing rituals, fasting, uh, in the, all the religious holidays. You have to go do good things. And if you don't do, you feel guilty. You always have to please Allah with your actions. Just five years ago, I was invited to a church. The person who invited me to a church uh, become my client. I said, I'm going to go visit her church and listen to the sermon because um, I respected other people's faith and it was okay for me uh, to go see and just visit. So uh, it doesn't matter which faith. I had a huge respect that they are following God. They are having godly life. And that's the reason I felt comfortable going and being in the presence of God. 
the people were worshiping Lord, singing the songs, I felt so much love of God. I felt so much in love and my tears started running down the, all the time. I couldn't stop myself. And then I look at people around me lifting their hands and worshiping like in my religion. When we pray, we lift up our hands like that. When I saw those people, it just touched me. I says, they are worshiping like in my religion. I love that. But not only it just touched me, their eyes were closed and they were worshiping God. And I felt so much love in the room. Somebody loves me. God loves me. And I was touched. And later she asked if someone wants prayer, go up front. So I went to get, to get prayers because I believed in prayers. And the ladies were praying uh, for me, laying their hands on me, holding my hands, praying. Uh, I, I, the tears were running off my face because I felt God's love. I felt someone is loving me that I never experienced before. And um, uh, I didn't know what happened. And then I made an appointment with the pastor of this church to find out from religious man to explain to me. So when I went to see him and told him what happened to me in his church, as soon as I finished asking my question, he opened the Bible, read me a scripture from the Bible saying, those who love God, God will show his power. And God showed me his power. And then I asked him another question. He turned other pages, read scriptures from the Bible. My every question he answered through the Bible. And then as a Muslim, I believed in Bible, although I believe it's corrupt, that change, but it's still a book of God. And then I told pastor, I says, pastor, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. I believe all the prophets of God. He told me Jesus is different, born in Virgin Mary. I believe in that. Uh, and then he told me, uh, would you say this prayer with me? I did, because I trust this, this man, a religious man, I was thinking, whenever I ask a question, he answered to me with the word of God, not from his mind. And I prayed the prayer because I believed in Jesus as a, a prophet of God. And, um, and then he gave me a Bible. I was invited to another church, so I went. And this preacher called people up front for prayer, so I went and he prayed over us. He looked at one girl and he said, um, uh, you've been hurt by your family members and the girl start crying and he says from today on you need to forgive those who hurt you and this girl start crying a lot you know what I'm hearing I never heard anything in my life you must forgive those who hurt you and when this pastor said you've been hurt by your family members it just spoke to me and and uh, because uh, we had dom dom uh, domestic, uh, you know, some issues in my family. That's how I grew up. He says, you must forgive to those who hurt you. And then he increased his voice. I was just standing watching what's going to happen to this girl. And this young pastor increased his voice. He said, in the name of the Lord, as soon as he said that, I felt somebody, you know, uh, hit my uh, knees. Nobody was hitting me. I felt on the floor. I felt like a lightning hitting me. I fell on the floor. I couldn't move, but I was feeling the peace in me. I was hearing how they pray to the girl. When I get up, I was so weak. I couldn't, I couldn't even um, walk. I felt so much power over me. And the power, I know it's the power of God. And then when I went home the next day, I, I put the Quran and the Bible on the table and I ask God, uh, God, you show me your power and I want to get to know you. Which book? Tell me which book to read. I don't even know what I'm doing this. I picked up the Bible, no, a Quran first. I put it down. I picked up Bible. I had goosebumps all over me. I said, I'm making this up. I'm going to ask again. In my mind, I thought God will tell me read the Quran first first because that's what I believed in. I, but that's why I said, I'm making this up. I'm going to try. I picked up Quran. I didn't feel anything. I put it down. I picked up Bibles the second time. I hit goosebumps deeper all over me. I received this as a sign. I say, God, I'm going to study Bible first, then, then Quran in a deeper level. 
and um, so uh, uh, I had so much desire to read the Bible and I had to go to a, a Bible school so I went to Bible deeper Bible school Old Testament New Testament and uh, uh, and Jesus start revealing himself to me everything I heard in the Bible touched my soul it was soothing to my soul it was like medicine for my soul hungry hurting soul it was ready me for me yeah it was the redemption yes redemption for my soul so my soul was connected to the true source of love unconditional love it just changed my life I start seeing visions about him and I never forget one vision he told me I am drawing yourself to me slowly you know he didn't say I want you none wasn't har harsh just gentle I'm drawing myself to you I didn't even know why he's talking to me speaking to me like that only one thing I can say that I received love his love that I never experienced in my love from nobody even at the church the ladies come they didn't even know me the first time they come and prayed hold my hands and prayed with me I said God I didn't do anything for these people and they are praying for me I always believed you do something for others in order to get something you do something please others in order to receive love to be loved I never never experienced true love in my life and the love of Jesus Christ through his true followers his love flowed through them to me and consumed me and filled me with his healing touch in my emotions I become a new person I was not the same I have I received my true identity who am I what's my purpose on this world because I was asking always what is my purpose? Why I am in this world? I know that I didn't come to this world to become a good wife and good mother. There must be something for me. But God revealed this to me. No one did. No one preached me gospel. I just ended up in this church. Just by God's grace, love consumed me. God himself revealed his power to me. No one did. And I can never deny that. I can never deny the love of Christ and why he died on the cross, why there's a power on his blood. Only God proved this to me by studying his word, the word of God, to set me free, the truth, the truth like Jesus said, you shall know the truth, the truth shall set you free. Yes, his truth did set me free from the darkness from the difficult times I was going through although I was married I have a wonderful husband two beautiful children beautiful home but I was still empty inside deep inside me and I just wanted to know who I am really and God revealed it to me and the first time in my life I know that I am created for purpose and God loves me the way I am I don't have to do anything to prove myself God just revealed his love to me and that is amazing my brothers and sisters my Muslim background still you are my sister and brothers call I encourage you call upon the name of Jesus Christ he's here to set you free and you will never be the same if you are going difficult times in your life if you never grew up with love doesn't matter if your parents didn't love you even if your husband no one loves you that's okay there's an almighty God in heaven who created us he used our father's seed and mother's womb and he created us with his hands and he's there for you when you call upon the Lord upon the Lord Jesus Christ he'll come and rescue you he's the only one 
will never forsake you or leave you. People will always disappoint you. Family members, friends, your husband, your wife, your children, grandchildren will disappoint you. But I am speaking from experience. When you are really searching God, He will reveal His power, His love to you. He did to me. I ask Him to come into my life and show me his way, simple prayer, and he did for me, and he can do it for you. You are not alone. Khadija's faith in Jesus Christ required her to overcome a few obstacles. When she heard Jesus Christ was called the Son of God, she immediately responded negatively. Now, Muslims believe in Jesus as Kalamatullah, meaning the Word of God, but not as the Son of God. To understand what the Son of God means, let us consider two questions, how and who. How did Jesus come to this earth? Actually, you may be surprised that Muslims and Christians do not have a disagreement on this subject. There is a notion that God took a wife and fathered a child. Muslims believe that this is what Christians mean when they refer to Jesus as the Son of God. Nothing could be farther from the truth. God has never taken a wife, period. It would be foolish to believe so. Again, we ask, how did Jesus come to this earth? This is explained to us in the Angel, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Jesus came to earth in a miraculous way. He was born to the Virgin Mary without the help of a human father. The Holy Spirit caused Jesus to be conceived. It was purely a miracle, which Muslims also believe this to be true. We have discussed how Jesus came to earth. Now we can ask, who is Jesus? Again, let's not look at our own opinions, but to what the Word of God teaches us. In verse 35, which I have just read, Jesus is called the Holy One and the Son of God. You remember how Khadija wanted to draw closer to God? She wanted to experience the power of God. Let's look at the relationship between the name of Jesus and the power of Jesus. Since Khadija has encouraged you, to call on the name of Jesus. This is important because the name represents the authority that goes behind it. Muslims use the name of Allah in everything they do, 
each of the 114 surahs of the Quran begins with the expression, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most gracious. It is a ritual, a mere mumbling of words. Do they really have the power of God behind what they are saying? Let me take you again to the Injil, to a book called Acts of the Apostles. This book is a true history of what happened to Jesus' disciples after Jesus died on the cross, rose from the dead, and was taken up to heaven. In Acts chapter 3, we read verse 1 through 9. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received the strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. So we see that the crippled man was healed in the name of Jesus. This means he was healed by the power of Jesus or the authority of Jesus. Some of the Jewish leaders weren't happy about this. Let's see what happened next in Acts chapter 4 verse 5 through 12. And it came to pass on the next day that the rulers, elders, and the scribes, as well as Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So here we see that Jesus' name has healing power, and his name has saving power. There is salvation in no other name. The power and the authority of Jesus are available to those who believe in his name. If you give your heart to Jesus, he will come into your heart. His power and authority will flow through you. If you are unsure about the identity of Jesus Christ, you can just pray in your own words. Tell him about your confusion and your desire to know the true identity of Jesus. It is one thing to know how Jesus came into the world. It is another thing to know who he is. Today can be the day of salvation for you. Don't wait until tomorrow, my friend. Turn away from your sins and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you do this, God will forgive your sins and give you a new heart. Would you like to pray Jesus into your heart right now? Pray this prayer with me. Say it so simply like this. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me for all my sins and cleanse me with your blood. I believe that you died for my sins and that you rose again from the dead. Today, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. 
I pray in Jesus' name, amen. We thank God for your decision and would like to help you begin your new life as a follower of Jesus Christ. Please visit our website, muslimjourneytohope.com. There you will find the testimonies of many other Muslims who have found Jesus Christ and the journey to hope. We also have materials in both English and Arabic that will give you more information about the Christian life. Through our website, you can also email us any questions, thoughts, or concerns that you may have. We hope and pray that this will encourage you in your new walk in Christ. I thank God that you were able to join us today. This was not an accident, but something that was destined by God. I invite you to join us again next time as we hear from another friend who has started out on the Muslim journey to hope. I'd like to conclude with a prayer for our viewers and Muslims throughout the world. Father, in Jesus' precious and holy name, Lord, I pray as you revealed yourself to Khadija, you revealed yourself to many Muslims, including me. Father, I pray that you reveal yourself to every Muslim man and woman and child who is watching this program and is hungry for the truth. Father, I pray that you show him what Jesus has done for them and show him who Jesus he really is the Son of the living God, with the power to heal and to save. I pray all of this in Jesus' holy name and give you all glory and praise and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I never, never experienced true love in my life. And the love of Jesus Christ drew His true followers his love flowed through them to me and consumed me and filled me with his healing touch in my emotions. I become a new person. I was not the same. I have, I received my true identity. Who am I? What's my purpose on this world? Because I was asking always, what is my purpose? Why I am in this world? I know that I didn't come to this world to become a good wife and good mother. There must be something for me. But God revealed this to me. No one did. No one preached me gospel. I just ended up in this church. Just by God's grace, love consumed me. God himself revealed his power to me. No one did. And I can never deny that. I can never deny the love of Christ and why He died on the cross, why there's a power on His blood. Only God proved this to me by studying His Word, the Word of God, to set me free, the truth, the truth, like Jesus said, you shall know the truth, the truth shall set you free. Yes, His truth did set me free from the darkness, from the difficult times I was going through. Although I was married, I have a wonderful husband, two beautiful children, beautiful home, but I was still empty inside, deep inside me. And I just wanted to know who I am really. And God revealed it to me. And the first time in my life I know that I am created for a purpose and God loves me the way I am. I don't have to do anything to prove myself. God just revealed His love to me and that is amazing.